Okay. Hey guys, today we're gonna read Roll Doll, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory's books. But that's not, that's Charlie and the, oh, that, that you factory. grabbed the Chocolate Factory one. Okay. Yeah, yeah he could read. Yep. And we're gonna do a read aloud. You might want to pause the video and room, and you'll have to read this. So I'm gonna give you um five seconds to pause the video and, and read it. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, thank you. Pause the video and read it. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Roll doll Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Two. Table. Pebble? Table. Let's not worry about that. <clears throat> there are five children in this book. Augustus Gloop, a greedy boy, Virgasol, a girl who was spoiled by her parents, Fire Bully Guard, a girl who who chews gum all day long from like TV. A boy who does nothing but watch television. And Charlie, the hero. Those are the five children in this book. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Chapter one, here comes Charlie. These are the very, these are the two very, these, Two very old people are the father and mother of Mr. Bucky. Their names are Grandpa Joe and, and Grandma Josephine. These are the are the two very old people, the father and mother of Mrs. Bucket. Their names are Grandpa. Or Grandpa George and Grandma Georgina. Georgina. This is Mr. Bucket. This is Mrs. Bucket. Mr. and Mrs. Bucket have a very has have a have a small boy whose whose name is Charlie Bucket. Who is Charlie? How do you know? Well, and how do you? And how do you do? And how? And how did? How you do? How you do again? How do? How did you do again? He is pleased to meet you. Chap this is only chapter one. I'm already messing up. <clears throat> the whole family, the six grown-ups count them, and little Charlie live together in a small wooden house on the edge of a great town. The house wasn't nearly large enough for so many people. And life was extremely uncomfortable for for them all. For them all, there were only two rooms in the place all together, and there was only one bed. The bed was given to the four old grandparents because they were so old and tired they couldn't. They, they were tired through they never got out of it. Okay. You want to keep going? Yeah. We'll end this until we get... No, I'm not, we're not going all the way to the end. How about we end it after... Oh boy. That's chapter two. So you have this page to read? No, I want to do, I, I want to end this until chapter five. 
Then, honey, we got to pause the video for a second. Continue. Grandpa Joe and Grandma Josephine on this side. Grandpa George and Grandma Georgina, Georgina on this side. Mr. and Mrs. Bucket and little Charlie Bucket slept in the upper room upon mattresses on the floor. In the summertime, this wasn't too bad. But in the winter, freezing cold drafts blew across the floor all night long. And it was awful. There wasn't, wasn't any questions of them being able to buy a better house or even sleep keep one more bed or even one more bed to sleep in they were they, they were far too poor for that mr bucket was the only person in the family with a job he worked <coughs> in a toothpaste factory where he sat all day on a bench and screwed little cats onto the tops of the tubes of the tubes. After the tubes have been filled, but the toothpaste cat screwer is never paid very much money. And poor Mr. Bucket, however, However hard he worked and however fast he screwed on the caps was never able to, to to make enough to buy one half of the things that so large which a family needed. There wasn't enough money to buy part proper food for them all. The only meals was they can afford were bread and ma and mar margarine margarine for breakfast they boiled potatoes and cabbage for lunch and cabbage soup for supper Sundays were a bit better they always looked for well, Rard forward forward to Sundays because then all all although although they had exactly the same everyone was really second helping the bucket of course didn't starve but every one of them two old grandfathers and the two old grandmothers, Charlie's father, Charlie's mother, and especially little Charlie himself. himself. One out from morning till night, a horrible feeling in their tummies. Charlie felt it worst of all and through the, although his father and mother often went without their share of lunch or supper so they there so they so that they could give give it to him it still wasn't too nearly enough for a grown boy he especially desperately desperately wanted something more filling and satisfying than cabbage the cabbage soup and the one thing he longed for more than anything 
anything more. Anything else was chocolate. <laughs> Keep going. Walking to school in the morning, Charlie could see great slabs of chocolate piled up high in the shop's shop's windows. He could stop and stare and press his nose nose against the glass, his mouth watering like mad. And many times a day, he would see other children taking creamy candy bars out of their pockets and munching on them candy bars. Candy bars. Greedily. And that, of course, was pure torture. Only once a year on his birthday did Charlie Bucket ever get to taste a little bit of chocolate. <laughs> the whole family saved up their money for that special occasion. Uh -huh. And when saved up for up their money for that special occasion was the great day arrived. Charlie was always presented with one small bar to eat all by himself. And each time he received it, marvelously birthday mornings, he would place carefully a, a, a small in a small wooden box that he owned, the treasure as full it were a bar of soil gold and the next few days he would allow himself only to look at it but never touch it and then at least when he could stand it no longer, he peel back a tiny bit of wrapping, of, of the paper wrapping, and one of the corners, especially a tiny bit of chocolate, with, oh, and allow, and, and then he could take a tiny nibble, just as a wow, um, the lovely taste to spread out slowly and over his tongue. The next day would, would take a tiny nibble and so on and so on. And this way Charlie would make a 10 set bar of chocolate more last him more than the month. <sighs> You're almost done with chapter one. Yep. But I haven't yet told you about the awful thing that tortured little Charlie with the lover of chocolate more than anything else. This thing for him was far, far worse than Seeing slabs of chocolate in the chocolate windows or watching children munching creamy candy bars. Right in front of him was the most terrible torture thing you can imagine. It was in the town itself. Actually within a sight, the house in which Charlie lived there was an enormous chocolate factory. Just imagine that. And it wasn't simply an ordinary, enormous chocolate factory either. It was the largest and most famous in the world, in the whole world. 
It was Wonka's factory, owned by a man named Willy Wonka, the greatest inventor of of the greatest inventor and maker of chocolates there was have ever been in the huge tremendous marvelous placing was that huge iron gates led leading it into it and the high wall surrounding him it is smoke surrounding him the chimneys was in the strange whistling sounds the coming from the deep inside it, it, it and the outside of the walls for a half a mile in every direction the air was scented 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 with the heavy rich smell of melting chocolate twice a day on his way to and from his school little charlie bucket had to walk right past the gate of every factory very Wait, how was your party it's gonna ruin my roof You're almost done. Very slowly, and he would hold his nose high to the air. Very slowly. Are you almost done? Very slowly. Okay. He would hold his. No, don't! Don't end it! I'm not, I'm not. I said okay. Very slowly. And he would hold his nose high in the air and take deep sniffs of glorious chocolate smells around him. Oh, how he loved that smell. And oh, how. He wished to go inside the chocolate factory and see what it was like. Okay, see. All right, and we're not doing chapter two because we're. Bye. I'm going to see you on the next read aloud. I will probably get to chapter five. We'll see. Say bye. Bye. Subscribe. Subscribe and hit that bell.